this is Sebastian, KB0TTL, and today we're going to do a brief introductory to the world of DMR. Um, you're probably familiar with analog radio, UHF, and VHF, um, talking on local repeaters, talking simplex to your friends a few miles away. Um, just some changes with DMR technology is that um, instead of being able to carry on just one conversation on a repeater at a time, DMR now offers the capability to have two simultaneous conversations going on on the same repeater. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, we're going to be using the internet um, in conjunction uh, with the repeater. Uh, versus just using a standalone repeater. If you like our content here today, uh, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So now, for the first time in a long time, uh, suppose you're in Chicago and you have a friend over in New York and you both have handhelds. You're both talking on repeaters. Well, before you could only talk on a repeater as far as that repeater would extend RF-wise. But now, you'd be logged into a digital talk group while talking on the repeater. So say your friend in New York is also on that same digital talk group on his repeater, you're now going to be able to talk back and forth. Um, this enables a lot longer of communications and a lot more privatized of communications and a lot more directed of communications because you're going to be able to select which talk group you wish to talk on. There are thousands of talk groups available in DMR. Um, so basically, if you're on, say, like a localized talk group, you'll be talking to people in your local or statewide area. Um, you can go on nationwide talk groups or even worldwide talk groups and talk to people all over the world um, just using a basic handheld radio, um, either on a repeater or your own personalized hotspot. The operation of the radios, although similar in the analog realm, and yes, DMR radios also work in the analog realm as well as the digital realm, um, is just basically difference in programming and code plug. I'm going to go over a few of these differences right now um, over on the computer. So right now we're just going to step over to the computer and I'm going to show you just somewhat programming wise and somewhat channel wise um, uh, how the channels and features differ between uh, DMR and analog radio. I remember back when I was first licensed back in 1995, a lot of us were sitting around and we were wondering, hey, are we ever going to be able to hook these repeaters together on 2 meters on 440 so we could talk to our friends, say, across the country or even across the globe? And back then the internet was still in its infancy, so we didn't really have uh, means by which uh, to go ahead and do this. Um, the answer to all of this is actually DMR or digital mobile radio. Instead of an analog signal, what we're now doing is we're now using a digital signal. We're actually putting two or the capability for two digital signals within one frequency pair so that two simultaneous uh, conversations can be taking place on the same repeater. DMR uses narrow band uh, versus wide band. That is a 12.5 kilohertz uh, bandwidth versus a 25 kilohertz bandwidth like analog uses. Uh, what we're doing is we're actually dividing the digital signal up into time slots. This is in a blockchain type scenario, 30 millisecond gaps um, in the transmit time. So one block of 30 milliseconds is time slot one. The next block of 30 milliseconds is time slot two and so on. So with the new digital technology, we can now fit two conversations where one conversation uh, once was. Basically what we're doing in a sense is we're taking the internet and using it as the big repeater or the mothership. And each of these individual repeaters uh, that have the DMR access are basically logging into talk groups and then using the internet to convey the information to the next repeater that is tuned to that talk group. So in essence, if you're on a specific talk group, all of the repeaters that are tuned to that specific talk group can hear what you're saying and can communicate with you. The Brandmeister network has thousands of different talk groups available. We're going to have a look at some of those talk groups in just a second here in the uh, CPS programming function of our Anytone 878. I'm going to show you what some of these look like. Um, and when you are on a specific talk group, you can hear anybody else that is all over the world that may be on a different repeater or home hotspot that keys up 
on that talk group. So instead of just having your analog signal with your local repeater where you could talk to a few guys locally, you're now using a digital signal and you're now using the internet basically as the mother repeater or the central hub to which all of these digital repeaters are hooked. And you can literally use your 2 meter slash 440 handheld to talk to people around the world. And there you have it, digital mobile radio. Now right now I'm going to go ahead and switch over uh, to the CPS software. This is the software that we use to program up our DMR handhelds or DMR mobiles. Uh, we're going to look at a few of these digital channels. I'm going to go through uh, just a little bit of the terminology here for you. Let me go ahead and start on uh, this digital channel here. So we have our frequency pair that we have programmed in like we do uh, with most repeaters. This is actually programmed for a hotspot or a home simplex repeater type device that you can get from us, the DB Mega Hotspot. It's like having your own home DMR repeater that plugs right into the internet that you can access these talk groups on. Let's go a little bit into these talk groups here though, a little bit more into these talk groups, shall we? Uh, right now we have the USA talk group selected. That is the nationwide talk group selected. It's a fairly busy talk group as I'm sure you can imagine with people keying in from all over the United States. Um, in HF terms, I would imagine this type of uh, talk group would be more of a calling frequency. And um, some of these lesser known talk groups would be more like what would be a simplex frequency. So you'd make your initial contact say on USA. And you might say, hey, meet me over on TAC 310, or hey, meet me over on BYRG, meet me over on the statewide talk group, meet me in my citywide talk group. And we would then take the conversation from this talk group over to the next. Um, so the USA talk group is programmed in this particular channel slot. We have our frequency pair. We have this set as a digital channel. Notice the bandwidth of 12 and a half kilohertz. And even on this 12 and a half kilohertz bandwidth, we have two time slots. Um, we have a time slot one and a time slot two. Now in terms of repeaters, most repeaters reserve time slot one for club nets and other things that standardly go on on a local repeater. They usually free up time slot two to use with talk groups, be it United States talk group, be it the worldwide talk group, be it the North American talk group, be it your local city or state talk groups, or be it special interest talk groups which do exist as well. But usually time slot two is set for talk groups. Usually time slot one is set for repeater or local club net activity. Uh, this can change. Some uh, repeaters use uh, time slot two for their local stuff and time slot one um, for the talk groups. So it can change via repeater and sysop, and it's important to know which talk group your sysop wants used for what, um, just to stay in good terms, of course, with your local ham radio club and prevent from having your DMR ID number banned on that particular uh, repeater or group of repeaters. And then we're going to go over to what's called color code. We're all familiar with CTCSS function, or at least I hope we're all familiar with CTCSS function when it comes to an analog signal. That is a sub-audible tone or code which must be admitted by your radio in order to access certain repeaters. What's the same here except in digital terms it's called color code. Um, we have color codes 0 through 15, which are commonly used by repeaters across the world here. Um, while many repeaters just simply default to color code 1, I'm in the Kansas City area here, um, and the BYRG repeaters mostly use color code 4. It won't actually be adequate just to go to repeater book and see what time slot and what color code these repeaters are being used on, as the time slot and color code is updated quite often by some of these sysops to their preference. So what will actually be necessary when you're looking for the credentials of a digital repeater to program into your, um, into your code plug here, like you're seeing here on the screen, um, in order to get those credentials, you'll actually want to go to the actual website for that digital repeater or digital repeater club for the most updated information uh, when programming your radio. 
Now, some repeaters are actually multi-mode as well, where you can use an analog signal or a digital signal. Um, those are few and far between. Most repeaters are either strictly analog or strictly digital um, in those terms. Now let's have a look at some of the talk groups that are available. This is just a partial listing of talk groups that you can get uh, for your radio. And there are literally thousands of them available. And it may take my CPS a little while here to populate all of these. I'm just going to read a few of these off. I'm going to scroll through. It's a massive, massive list here. We have worldwide, we have Europe, we have North America, we have Asia, Australia, German talk group, English talk group, Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch, Nordic. We have Arabic. Um, each of the states have a statewide talk group. We have TAC channels or extra communication channels. We have... Um, I mentioned the nationwide here is what I was showing you initially. So we have our states. And remember, as long as the repeater you, on, you are on is tuned to that specific talk group, um, it will communicate to all other repeaters on that specific uh, talk group. Uh, we have Aries talk groups. We have Skywarn talk groups. We have just about any talk group imaginable available to you. Um, on the Brandmeister network, which is the network most widely used uh, by the Anytone radios uh, that we sell here in shop. And probably the most growing in popularity is the Brandmeister uh, network. All right, so that was just a brief introduction to digital mobile radio or DMR. Please stay tuned to our channel. We hope you've enjoyed today's introduction to DMR. We hope you'll consider it, so be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 73.